Hello everybody, my name is Majestic Hero and I'm back with a brand new video. I really hope you guys had a great couple of weeks while I was away having troubles with my home Wi-Fi. But I am back with a brand new video and of course 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, this was the first thing I had to do when, when everything was up and running again. I had to say this. Chelsea 4, Man City 4. We drew the match, but we won the game. Everyone, I mean everyone and their grandma thought we were absolutely going to get pounded by the sheer quality of Manchester City. I mean, I do, I did believe we might lose the game just because of the sheer quality of Man City and they seem to be on the up again. But I have to say what a bunch of characters we have at our disposal. Cole Palmer, what a signing he is. I mean, he's on track becoming signing of the season. And of course, people will banter him saying he scored four out of four penalties, but four out of four penalties is still 100% conversion rate. And all I have to say is this, what a game it was. I mean, season, I mean, that was a staple right there. That was the Premier League at its very best controversy from Chelsea being against 12th men from the, like from, I think Haaland got his penalty, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, but that was an absolute disgrace that was. We saw it against Manchester United, and frankly, I love seeing Manchester United suffer, but not like that. Let them lose convincingly. Let them lose horrifically, but let them lose fairly. And I, I knew the moment that Anthony Taylor was the was the referee for another Chelsea big game. I knew it, it were, were going to be against 12 men again, and so it be called. I mean, the fact that the first goal, the first goal of a derby. So to say, is so massive. The first goal, of course, in hindsight, the, you can say that was a catalyst for having one of the best Premier League games of of like of recent memory. But the first game of such a, a magnitude of a game is absolutely critical. It's absolutely it 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 it, it can galvanize a team. It can galvanize a team to an extraordinary rate, but for Anthony Taylor to give that on Marco Corella when Haaland started that was absolutely disgusting. I was disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. But in hindsight, you can say that was a catalyst for having one of the greatest games of our season. And was that a genius or was it a fluke? And we all know what the answer was again. And ironically enough, the week the week he was suspended, he did a similar thing in the championship. So frankly, this I, I really wish Chelsea would go and say we don't want this guy referring our games because it's like a, it's like an omen. It's, it isn't even an omen because we know what's going to happen and it keeps on happening and happening and happening. And I'm telling you, man, Chelsea versus Liverpool at Anfield, Anthony Taylor is going to be the, um, the ref again. I mean, I know this and you know this, but anyway, let's focus on the game. 4-4, four, four. I mean... What can I say? Actually, I said this on my WhatsApp status, and just to provoke a reaction, I, I'm, and I'm going to say this again. So I posted the score 4-4, four, four, and my, my caption was, those were the treble winners, pathetic. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and and the thought behind it was, these are the treble winners, the 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 insurmountable quality that Manchester City have with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne out, it's still enough to dispatch teams of Chelsea, which are frankly in our infancy. We are infants among these gargantuan giants of, of the football world. Frankly, I mean, even though we are those 115 charges aren't even having effect or we, we don't even know what's going to happen to them. But the fact that we drew the game but won the match because... In hindsight, or even before the game, if if I were to tell you Chelsea versus Man City is going to be a draw, who would have been the benefactors? Chelsea, and who would have lost two points? And that would be Man City because of the sheer quality that they that they have. And I gotta say, Reese James back to his best. I mean, not even to his best because he didn't even finish the game yet. But wow, man, what a way to come back, pocketing one of the most overhyped wingers right now in Jeremy Doku and doing the same to a hundred million dollar bench warmer in Jack Grealish. I mean Mali Augusto did his part as well, frankly, and Mali Augusto is a great, great understudy, even though they are the same age, I believe. I think James is just a few years older. But the point still stands, man. This this Chelsea team can only get better. But is Chelsea back? And I will say no, no, no. Chelsea are not back because I know Chelsea Football Club. We, And then I said this even when we're facing Arsenal. 
um, Spurs, Man City, Newcastle, Brighton, and Manchester United. I'm saying these five games, six games, I, I don't know how, how, how many I said there. These the the these run of games are where we're gonna see the best of Chelsea because I don't see any of the of of the four before mentioned teams except maybe Manchester United but we're at Old Trafford so I doubt they'll do that. I don't see them sitting back. And when I see Chelsea playing against Everton at home, away from home, sitting back with Tarkovsky and a great defensive line, and we beat those teams, that's where I'll say, okay, this is where we are getting back. Now, this is where we are climbing the mountain. Because, again, the low block has always been our problem. And the fact these top teams, we can play well against top teams, but it doesn't matter if you lose against to Nottingham Forest and the others. The beginning of the season obviously hindered us. But I always knew what we were. We were a team in development, so all these people expecting us to win these games. It would have been amazing to win them like we won, the, like how we should have won at, at Arsenal, uh, against Arsenal. But I knew we, we, we were going to have a lot of hip hiccups. But I didn't expect the maturity that, that, that we showed today. And of course, Thiago Silva was the apex and Reem Sterling was. But I'm saying the the maturity of the Malagustos, of the... The Saucy's being new to the league, of Cucurella having a resurrection arc. I mean, Caicedo, I mean, people are barely talking about his price, but I'm sure they will now. I mean, Enzo Fernandez is our best quality player in the midfield, but he's off it because he's being pushed by Conor Gallagher, who's just showing Conor Braveheart Gallagher. I mean, what a resurrection arc he's having. And of course, the cruel, the, the jewel in the crown, Cole Palmer. What a signing. And, I, I, and I've been saying this for so many times. Whoever said we must sign Cole Palmer needs a raise immediately. He needs it today. He needs it yesterday. And every time Cole Palmer gets a goal, he gets an ass, a absolute bonus. Because what a, a quality play is. An absolute quality play. Like, and also Sanchez as well had a big save against Haaland when, like, like when he was through one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, all of the goals you could say, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing he could do about that. Nothing at all. But I have to say... What a performance that was. That was that was a, a magnificent performance. Absolutely magnificent performance. But there is one thing I like to say regarding Gold Bridge for the Gold Bridge Saves Football Podcast. I mean, so basically he was saying um the mid season report. I mean it's not mid season yet, but you basically understand what it says. How are teams performing and he graded them? And I think he gave Chelsea a D plus or a D. And I think that's absolutely dismal. That's dismal. I mean that's infuriating because everything considered we didn't buy top quality players. People like to say we like we spent one billion, we spent one billion. I will I will say similar to Mr. United. And Mr. United are playing I mean, they're having better results, but but you, but you can't say they're playing better than us. We create chances, we don't have a striker, and that's our own detriment. But when you look at all the things we have... Damn it. <laughs> but if you look at everything we have at our disposal, we bought kids, we bought babies, we bought infants, and we're expecting them to grow into men. When you look at everything we have, quality players we have, and, and I do think the majority of our... Not, not the majority, but a good chunk of our transfer budget are out on loans with Alanjo, Diego Morea, and others. I'm, I appreciate you, you guys don't know what I'm talking about. But to give us a D is absolutely superbly harsh. Superbly harsh, especially based on recency form. The, 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 we, like, we haven't lost to a top four team, to a last season top four team, or even a, 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 a traditional top four team. We haven't lost to them yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> we, haven't, we won't lose to them at all. But... To give us a D is absolutely despicable and it's diabolical. I mean, I'm, I'm using a lot of D words because of the D. But if I was being impartial, I would give us a C. Maybe a C plus because of recency form. And we and again, we haven't lost to a, to a, a, a top side team yet. Um, I would give us a C because when you look at what we bought, we bought Brighton's out of favor goalkeeper. We bought Mila Gusto from Olympic Lyonnais. Thiago Silva, we have it I mean, an uh, amazing. Levi Colwell was on when Brighton did very well. We we just have developmental players. We have, I mean, aside from from Raheem Sterling, yeah, just, basically just Raheem Sterling. All of our players have improved, and 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 Enzo Fernandez. So to give us a D is harsh, but I think giving us a C minus a C plus, just around the C, saying with what we have. 
is absolutely great. And of course, people like to say with the one billion spawned, like one billion spend and all that. And I will say to that is the product that we have isn't for instant success. It isn't for instant success. It's for success over 10 years, but basically after two years. That's what, that's what the plan is, and you can see that with how we buy and how we and and what we sell and what we don't buy. So, I, I think if you're a Chelsea fan and you understand the Chelsea situation, you will be more lenient to how you're gonna grade Chelsea so far. But of course, when you're looking outside, looking at just the basic facts, you know, one billion spent. I mean, tenth in the league. Then all, I, I can I can understand why you would give us a D. But I wouldn't do that personally. And to to wrap up this video, I would like to say, Goldbridge Dan will be back. Hopefully today so I can do a double upload on this monumental day that I can finally upload again I really hope I can do that, but we'll have to wait and see because I think I'm three episodes behind so I'm gonna have to binge I'm gonna have to watch it methodically and analyze every piece of nonsense Goldbridge will have to say as we know you would but I do expect we have we had a dismal end to the season because I think the last video was the West Ham 3-0 and that was the lo the second last episode of the season I think depending on the games we had left but I did see we had a we had a league final FA Cup final against Liverpool so obviously I do think we got demolished because Liverpool are absolute behemoths of a team and and they play Gengen style football yeah but that will all be taken apart and dissected when I catch up on the Barco Rich AFC career mode and, and and I really hope that I made sense this early morning because I did say a, a lot of jibber jabber. I did run around the place because frankly I didn't plan this. I uh, lost night the wife. I came back on. I was like jubilant. I'm like okay, first thing in the morning when I talk about Chelsea and I think I talk about everything I wanted to talk about. Not necessarily because I do I do wonder about the future of Nani Matter Weeky and uh, all the bench players. Broya, Broya. If we get um, Victor Osman or Ivan Tony. Because ideally, okay, last, last thing I'm going to talk about, last thing I promise. The striking position is obviously something that we need to, to, to deal with. If we get Ivan Tony in the January window, what's going to happen to Breuer? Because I think Breuer and David Washington, David Washington going alone, so it's, it, it's, it's whatever. Breuer is the one I'm worried about. Because my idea was, if we get a striker in Ivan Tony in, um, in January, I want us to look at how how he performs and look at Victor Osman in the summer. That was my plan of all this. We need a striker that's primarily proven that won't have any um I know adjustment rate, you know, getting adjusted to the league because it, it is the second half of the season and hopefully we'll be fighting for top four, if not the league. <laughs> but um Obviously, from now up until January, Jackson has to prove himself that no, we, we, we don't need a striker. But I doubt he can do that. And then Ivan Tony is available. We're going to get Ivan Tony. Pre pre Premier League proven, prolific, big, strong, smart, target number nine, quick as well. Get him in. I think that's a, as good as 100% we're going to get from like a guaranteed goal score you're going to get in January because Napoli are absolute B-I-T-C-H to deal with. And, and and if that doesn't work out to the level that we need in the summer, we look at Victor Osman. And Victor Osman is basically twerking to come to us. So that's all well and good. <clears throat> and that is all. And all that's left for me to say, almost messed that up, actually I did. All that's left for me to say is wish all of you a very good day. And I'm back, baby. See you hopefully later on today as well. Bye-bye.